So what do I have in my box, you ask? Well, that's an Eastern-made Western classic. It's the Norinco Century JW2000 Coach Shotgun. So this scatter gun is made here. More specifically, here. In Jingzhou, China, at the Jingzhou Machine Works. Now if we look over the stats, you'll see that this gun measures 37 inches overall, has a 20 inch barrel, comes standard with checkering, and walnut stained hardwood furniture. It has a thick rubber butt pad and weighs in at 7.8 pounds. It's chambered in 12 gauge and can shoot up 3 inch shells. Now, I have to stress this, this gun comes with a disclaimer. It says, do not shoot, steal shot. It seemed pretty adamant about that, so I wouldn't go messing around. It is made in China. Okay, now I know what you're thinking. Hey, shut up already. Open the box. Okay, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. All right, let's pull the top off. What do we have here? All right, you'll see that it comes in three pieces, and we're going to pull each one of these out individually and have a closer look at them. Up the forearm. Looking at its profile, we see it measures 1.4 inches at its widest and 1 inch at its most narrow point. Now moving on to the bottom, we see that it's 2.4 inches wide, and overall, it comes out to 9 inches. And it's quite wide when compared to its American counterpart. Now looking at the finish, we see it comes with out-of-the-box scratches, and that splotchy look you see is a result of the clear coat being sprayed on. Now flipping it over, looking at the inside, we see two big grooves cut out for weight reduction, and some exposed splinters and wood grain. Now looking at the lock lever and spring, we can see that it's quite easily manipulated, but doesn't quite close all the way. Now the wood itself has a very light and cheap feel to it, and the checkering Looks good from a distance, but offers little in the way of grip. And the border even has some uneven spots cut in it. Now, onto the forearm head, we can see it's a heavy piece of metal with a solid tang. That's a part of the locking system for the forearm. And that's held in place by two heavy wood screws. And it is poorly fitted, as you can see here. The second piece is the butt and receiver. The butt itself measures 15 and 3 quarters of an inch long. And with the butt pad, it adds an extra inch. Now the grip measures 5 and a quarter inches in diameter near the top. And 6 and a half near the bottom. And the finish, more of the same. But with scratches. More scratches. Dents and pop marks. And even feature spots completely untouched by the finish. The butt itself feels hollow, and the same can be said about the butt pad. The whole setup feels very front heavy. Moving to the side plates, we can see they're very basic, and the same goes for the hammer. Now the breakdown lever actuates easily enough, but does tend to get caught every once in a while. The slide safety works, but it's very tight. And you can see the firing pin retainer has grooves cut for a spanner wrench. The machining itself looks good-ish. It has two grooves cut to cam the shell ejector. Now moving to the firing pin, we can see it protrudes out fairly well and is not too sharp, just about right. Now moving to the inside, we see the locking bar is about six millimeters thick. Now moving on to the blue, we can see that it's subpar with all sorts of discoloration. It has a very spacious metal trigger guard and what the company lists as, no kidding, a feature, two working triggers. Now call me crazy, but isn't that standard? And a third piece, and a very important garnish on this suck dish, the boom tubes. Up the breech. What is that? Oh, just a piece together barrel and breech is all. And, it's not even put together very well. There are gaps. Now compare that to the American made and you can see it's one solid piece. Okay, 
Let's move on to the latch block. You see this big groove cut out? That's just there for weight reduction. And this thing is massive. It measures 55 millimeters long, 20 millimeters tall, and 15 millimeters wide. And houses the ejector, which appears to be one solid piece of cast metal. And looking to the top side, we see it has a very bulky rib. Now to the underside, we see the rib, uh, no, no, that's a large gap. A large canyon-like gap that is full of completely safe and non-toxic Chinese-made packing grease and other random bits of debris and crap. Now I'm sure it's a completely safe and reliable gun, as long as you follow the guidelines set forth in the owner's manual. Now moving on to the forearm latch. It's pretty massive, measuring five millimeters wide. Oh, there's that rib. Moving down from that, we see the swivel, held in place by two machine screws. And if we travel further down, we're gonna come to the drain hole that you're gonna need for all that degreaser. Top side, we see a stubby beaded front sight. And if we look at the finish, it's more of the same. Lots and lots of discoloration. And to top it off, it even has large grooves and scratches in the barrel. I'm assuming from a wire wheel or something during the finish process. You can actually feel them. They're quite prevalent. Okay, that's enough of this depressing benchtop review. Let's take it to the range and sling some lead. See how it does. Now, before I get started, I just want to say one thing. I am totally unprepared for this. I got here at the range and realized I don't have any shotgun shells. But I did happen to have some Aguila mini shells stowed away in my truck, but I only got very few. So we're gonna crack some rounds off and see what this thing does. All right, let's do it. Get my ears in. My last video, I didn't have my eyes and ears and kind of got called out on it. hit that but it didn't shatter huh. those things are crazy now I gotta say before you go shoot this gun make sure you clear that packing grease out even with the packing grease cleared out and some good gun grease in or gun oil in there it's still kind of hard to break down so keep that in mind Now, with these Agulus, I can barely feel this thing kick. It's like shooting a 22, no, like no kidding. So far, not too bad. Check that smoke rolling out. All right, I'm gonna set up some paper. We're gonna back off about 10 feet and see what kind of pattern it throws with single barrel. And then I'm going to crack off both barrels on a different piece of paper. See what kind of pattern it throws. Let's do that. My 10 feet. See what kind of pattern this thing throws. Pretty tight. Check it out. We're looking at about two and a half inches. And spread. Slap another piece of paper on here and uh, crack off both barrels. These things are absolutely ridiculous. All right, let's crack off both barrels. I have a very large spread. We should get all the pellets on paper. Uh, see how she does. Now that had a little bit more of a kick to it. Overall, I give this gun about a five out of ten. It's not very expensive, so it's a fun little gun to play with. Like I said, I wouldn't shoot steel shot out of it. The company's pretty uh 
pretty clear about that. And uh, like I said earlier, I had a lot more planned for this video. Things didn't work out. But there you have it, folks. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and keep shooting, America. Full beard manly.